Welcome to the Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize 2021. I'm Anita Taylor and I'm the founding director of the open exhibition dedicated to drawing. Here we are at Trinity Boy Wharf in London where we're about to launch the exhibition and announce the awards. Trinity Boy Wharf Trust have been our sponsors since 2018 and we're thrilled to be here today in their wonderful venue at the chain store overlooking the Thames. In the exhibition this year, there are 114 drawings by 99 artists, designers, architects, makers, and other drawing practitioners. The exhibition was selected by Sheila Gowda, an artist based in Bangalore in India, by Simon Groom, who's Director of Modern and Contemporary Art at the National Galleries of Scotland, and Zoe Whitley, the Director of Chisenhall Gallery in London. They chose the main Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize exhibition of 101 drawings. The Working Drawing Award had its own dedicated selection panel and 13 drawings by 12 drawing practitioners were chosen by Leonie Bell, Director of v a Dundee, Paul Finch, Programme Director of the World Architecture Festival and Charles O. Job, who's a product designer and architect based in Zurich. And this year we're announcing a first prize of £8,000, a second prize of £5,000, a student prize of £2,000 and a working drawing award of £2,000. All of the works were made since January 2020. We also this year offer the biennial Evelyn Williams Drawing Award, which is offered every other year in association with the Evelyn Williams Trust, Drawing Projects UK and Hastings Contemporary an award which supports a, an artist with an existing track record to develop a drawing project or their drawing practice for an exhibition or similar at Hastings Contemporary in 18 months or two years or so time. So we see the awards as being able to reward talent and excellence but also to support drawing practitioners to continue within their work, to continue their practice with the knowledge that their work has been chosen, as all of the work in the exhibition has, by a really distinguished set of selection panels, and that that has um, a fantastic opportunity alongside it. Their work is presented in the exhibition here at Trinity Boy Wharf. It then tours to different venues in the UK. Alongside it, there's an education pack, an education programme, a fully illustrated exhibition publication, and we'll be producing this film, but many other events which will be filmed and shared freely uh, for others to join in and celebrate the role and value of drawing today. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize. There's a remarkable range of work this year, really remarkable, from the photo reel, you can't really imagine that someone with a pencil achieved it, to the single line, also from the large in the form of a cloud, would you imagine that, a cloud all drawn, right down to a bee. Do come and enjoy, however you do this, whether you do it virtually as they say, or whether you do it in person, either here at Trinity Boy Wharf or when we're out on tour. The show is here now on this beautiful sunny autumn day and we'll be here again in November when we will once again be able to enjoy in a similar space this marvellous exhibition. The Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize exhibition in 2021 received 3,300 submissions from 46 countries which is a testament to the value of the role and nature of drawing in contemporary practice and in contemporary thinking about what it's like to be alive in the 21st century. This particular exhibition really reflects the nature of where we are today. So you'll find all sorts of drawings in the exhibition that reflect on the issues that we faced as a global pandemic, the issues that we face in society, but also drawings that celebrate the aesthetic nature uh, of being alive in the world today. These two drawings by Ian Chamberlain deal with the themes of shelter, 
They're small, very focused pencil drawings and they isolate these constructs, these constructions, these shelters being made within the centre of the page. They're a part of a very long-standing series that Ian has been making around shelters, boundaries and outposts. Something that protects us from the world, something that allows us to withdraw. And yet they sit quite openly on the page and they seem quite vulnerable, open to the elements, open to attack and quite fragile despite the, the nature of the sense of their construction. They're seen as architectural metaphors and they're further informed by literary sources including Shelley's Osmandias, Invisible Cities by Calvino and Terminal Beach by J.G. Ballard. The next drawing on this wall by Yvonne Crossley is called Skin Deep and again the images, the subjects of this drawing float free uh, within the surface, this time the surface and the ground as the wall itself. So they've been made um, as constructions, they're pinned, articulated figures. So they refer to puppets, to dolls, to anatomical models. And they relate to this idea of the domestic, of human activity, decorative qualities, but also the sense of inhabiting a body. Kate Black's drawing also has a very strong central subject the subject of a horse. It's called Horse Blue White Verticals and it's a collage with pencil crayon and watercolour on paper, on found paper I should add. So drawn onto the pages of a, a former book um, is this horse and it's part of a series that deals with the idea of horse racing and the idea of the history of the market town of Malton in North Yorkshire. These two drawings by Georgia Kitty Harris are really very compelling. They're pencil on paper, they're clearly part of a series focused on serial images, serial archiving, serial documentation. And they're called Explain Yourselves. Uh, one is a drawing from archive mugshots of Washington State Penitentiary inmates from the 1930s. And the other is a drawing from archive Leavenworth inmates mugshots from the 1940s. So they talk to us of histories, they talk to us of personal histories, and they talk to us of the histories of penitentiary culture and the nature of who uh, is identified with those penitentiaries in particular periods of time. The story by Roma Tin also talks to the nature of identity and uniform. And in this instance, it's a drawing um, of a school class uh, they're all wearing the same uniform, which of course is meant to suppress identity. They're all individual, individually drawn and made with that kind of loving sense that a drawing can do as it reinterprets either a photograph or an experience. Uh, but their expressions give away their individuality. It's a drawing set in June 1950 in Lisbon. And Romatean is also an author as well as a, a drawer. Um, and that relationship, I think, between exploring the narratives um, of histories, the narratives of found photographs or experiences, um, is integral to the reading of the work. And there's something very extraordinary happening here in terms of the sense of scale within the space, with the apertures um, at the back of the, the drawing. Um, are these figures looking on? Um, and of course there is a sense of uh, being observed, um, of being witnessed, of scrutiny uh, and perhaps something a little more malevolent in those gazes. These two drawings by Russell Heron uh, are really quite extraordinary. Uh, they're highly illusionistic. One is called Cardboard Portrait 10. It's pencil on paper, it's 38 by 35 centimetres, so small, very focused head size drawings. And Head of a Girl 2021, which is the one that looks as though it has marker pen written over it as well. Uh, they're part of a series, a very big, large series of works that explore portraiture through the use of images that have been constructed in cardboard and then reproduced as pencil drawings. So they have a real clarity, a real focus. Um, and they have a real expression despite the neutrality of language. 
this drawing by Gary Lawrence, Ye Old Keyhole Surgery, is a really fabulous drawing. It's made in the most humble of materials, found paper, some acrylic paint, paper that's stuck together with tape and drawn on with biro. So it has a fantastic quality. Gary submits regularly to the Drawing Prize and we always have this sensation when you unfurl these drawings which arrive in a tube. Um, they're very unprecious in the way that they're presented, but they unfurl to reveal these really rather miraculous, magical uh, images. And this particular drawing is influenced by a medieval image of a figure lying on a table and by the personal experience of keyhole surgery. And it celebrates and comments on the National Health Service and its value and importance to all of us here in the UK. The drawing has fantastic images. It's really rich, it's really complex, it's multi-layered. It's a drawing to spend a lot of time with. And its wonderful tapestry-like quality gives it a monumental feeling, as well as something that touches on decoration, but it's a decoration more in keeping with rugs that talk to different political narratives and other things. So it's got a fantastically rich um, set of images and comments to explore, which seem incredibly timely. Gary's very keen to tell us it's not a COVID drawing. It's not about the NHS in COVID times. This is a drawing which is about celebrating and valuing the NHS in all times for the miraculous and wonderful work that they achieve. David Cutts' drawing, called Pool Jump 2021, is charcoal on paper. It's a large drawing. It's 91 by 121 centimetres. And it relates to the sense of photography. It relates to an idea of escapism that we, we're fed through images of advertising um, that are focused very much on a kind of sense of a consumed experience, a desirable experience. So it plays with really interesting notions of, of what we're intended to desire here or what the participants in this image are engaging with. So it clearly has an element of um, playfulness, of vacation, of luxury, of floating. It has a sense of frivolousness and it also has a sense of imminent disruption. So the sexual tension, the element of surprise all sits as part of this drawing. James Goslin's drawing, uh, Sleeper at Claude, is a really beautiful meditative drawing. It's about documenting the experience of being within a museum. And so it's made in situ in room 29 of the National Gallery in London. And the place, the piece, is part of an ongoing series of drawings that depict the things that happen in the gallery. So all of the happen chance, happenstanced moments that take place with people coming and going, lots of visitors coming to visit, coming to see different aspects, a sense of somebody witnessing the witnessing and the observing, the engagement uh, of people, the visitors to the museum with this work of art. Alberto Rapetti is an artist based in Geneva in Italy and his drawing is called Lockdown Cloud 2021. It's a very long drawing. It's 89 centimetres high and 223 centimetres wide. And it's called Lockdown Cloud. It's made in ballpoint pen on paper. And it's intended to think about the sense of what we've been looking at, looking out uh, in terms of lockdown. So it looks over a very low horizon of sea and the cloud seems to lift the darkness from the sea and dissipate it uh, through the lines, through the rhythm, through the mark making uh, of the biro on this paper. So it's a wonderful sense of days and months of looking out at the sky, looking at the clouds gathering, dispersing, disappearing over the horizon. And this really beautiful drawing by Yunhee Choi it's called FD2102, 20, and it was made in 2021. It's made with charcoal, graphite, ink, mineral oil on paper. And it's made in two parts that relate to each other. It's a folded drawing. So I, my sense is that FD relates to the idea of a folded drawing. 
and it combines aspects of charcoal drawing with traditional Asian fabric dyeing techniques. And this series that uh, Yun Hee has been making has developed into a visual metaphor of a repetitive daily routine overlaid with the unpredictable events of life, particularly during the pandemic. The Korean verb for fold has multiple meanings that include putting thoughts aside in order to go forward. Yuni Choi is uh, based in Portland in Oregon in the States and so this is a, a really interesting drawing um, to have within the show. Roland Hicks' drawings, Double Chip Shuffle Zip, 2021, is a really extraordinary drawing. It's made in coloured pencil and acrylic gouache on paper cut out. Um, so it's made on paper and then it's cut out to form and enhance this trompe l'oeil representation of two offset pieces of chipboard that are apparently stapled together. And as Roland says, perhaps a little overzealously. Ronan's work belongs somewhere between the traditions of still life, painting, Arte Pavera, Neo Dada assemblage, and various types of geometric abstraction. And this drawing is really playful. It's a very humble looking drawing. Uh, it's all the more extraordinary the more closely you look. This pair of drawings by Mark Shields are incredibly compelling. Uh, they're called Sia and Sybil. Uh, and they're both made in 2021. They're a pair of drawings. They're 40 centimetres by 27 centimetres. And they relate to this idea of outsiders, exiles, solitaries and sufferers. And the sense of the seer looking beyond, seeing beyond the surface of things, mutely observing our inconsequential comings and goings and foreseeing an end, whatever is in sight. Um, and the Sybil drawing is again about looking beyond the surface of things and bearing the sadness of knowledge and she sees all the if -onlys. So you can see that they're two drawings that are really resonant in their sense of taking deep observation, the idea of witness as subject and as the artist of witness in constructing these witnesses to our very complex times. Esther Martina Ray drawing of a young man sleeping on the underground is made in pencil charcoal pierre noir which is a very black waxy pencil and oil pastel on paper it's a small drawing on a found bag uh, from a shop uh, that she keeps to draw on as if there was a shortage of paper and this drawing is made um, of a man who she felt looked like an angel crossing london in his sleep um, on the tube, an empty tube carriage which was otherwise empty and she drew him from life there and finished the drawing later at home. The nature of working on the found bags means that the drawing is obliged to fit between the lines and the typography which already exist on the paper and that creates all sorts of different associations. So the Dupuy, founded in 1889, sits there as a reference and the PA that is left this drawing by Emma Douglas is a wonderfully vibrant drawing in pink. It's very simple as an image, and yet it holds a very complex um, set of references. The drawing is called First Shunt. It's made in 2021, and it's watercolour, ink and pencil on paper. And Emma has been making drawings since her son Cato died in 2010, which has become a project that records the marks he made during his life both physically and emotionally, the places that they visited and the images that lingered after he'd left. But this image, called First Shunt, is the scar. It's a drawing of a scar that resulted from Cato's first operation when he was three months old. This drawing by David Haynes is called Dark Balloons 2021. It's made in graphite and Nero pencil on paper, and it's an incredibly immaculate photorealist drawing. It's really about how things fall apart, the kind of tenuous nature of these celebratory balloons that we make for parties, for moments of celebration. It's made during lockdown. It's obviously got an incredibly dark message of things fall apart. These two drawings by Susie Hamilton, Bedside and Red Doctor, uh, they're both acrylic and pastel on paper or on card. So they're made on quite provisional material, actually. 
Uh, and they're from a series that she calls her C19 series, made during lockdown, when doctors continued, or the image of doctors continued her preoccupation with masked and hooded figures. So Susie's been making these images of polar explorers, samurais, uh, soldiers and astronauts. Um, and the, the sense of the enigma, the enigmatic nature um, that their presence derives by wearing these face coverings. So again, two drawings that talk to our time, to this very particular time, but also, in a sense, also celebrate the sense of these amazing people who sit behind masks uh, but carry out these fantastic acts that deal with life and death and preserve life as far as they can. This drawing by Habib Hajali of Mary Seacole, made in 2020, is again a ballpoint pen drawing on an antique map. And it pays homage to Mary Seacole, who was the British Jamaican nurse, healer and businesswoman who worked behind the lines during the Crimean War. So known as one of the greatest Black Britons in history, uh, Habib is keen to ensure that her contribution is recognised and given greater recognition um, in terms of history. Her work had been underrepresented until the early 2000s and his concern is literally that this heroine, Mary Seacole and her fabulous work, should be celebrated and be put literally back on the map. Victoria Clare Burney is an artist born in Lagos, Nigeria and living and working in Edinburgh. And her drawing is called The Burial Ground on the Marm Road. And it's a pencil on paper drawing, it's exquisitely drawn and it creates this isolated sense of a space, a set of trees with a burial ground tucked behind it. So there's a huge distance around the observed elements of the drawing. The Marm Road is the old drove road linking Cymru to Loch Tay, and the burial ground lies on the western border of the Danira estate. It once offered rest to the Dundas family and the scions of Henry Dundas, the first Viscount Melville. Dundas remains a contentious figure in the history of Scotland, and inconceivably powerful, he delayed the abolition of the British slave trade. And her project, her message, is that all landscapes register human actions and sometimes they're incredibly complex. These two lovely drawings, um, as you can see, have a sense of travelling through space. So the drawn language gives you that sense of speed, of movement. The drawings are by Sophia Nefora, and they're both untitled, uh, but they're drawings that are part of an extensive series, and they're aimed at depicting the moments of the road trip that Sophia used to do frequently from the city that she studied in, in Thessaloniki, in Greece, to her hometown in Patras. And she took pictures every few seconds, which are then translated uh, as moments and memory into works that link directly to that personal experience, but also have a, a resonance, a sense of nostalgia, of longing and daydreams and feelings that surface in the process of a road trip. So they're very evocative in their sense of travel, of these shifting, passing by these trees. This drawing by Cheryl Lewis is called Schalborg, and that's an Old Norse warfare term, which translates as a world of shields. It's really rather a beautiful drawing. It's large and it's made of composite sheets of graphite imprinted on an oriental paper, so something that's very absorbent uh, and flexible. So these panels form a composite image, and Cheryl sees these as a wall of shields. So they create a barricade they feel very bodily, and yet they feel like shields. Think about shielding and separation from a world and also going into battle. Uh, and it's a drawing that is quite monumental in scale. It's quite forceful and yet delicately, beautifully, mesmerisingly made. It's a drawing you want to examine close to and the resonance of this sense of a barricade a set of shields is something that then starts to operate in our sense of thinking about this drawing and what it actually means. This drawing by Marcello Albagli, 
who's a Brazilian artist who lives between Rio de Janeiro and Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, it's a drawing, it's part of an extensive series. It's called Artur Forget Me 2021, and it's made in pencil on found paper from the 19th century. So those pieces of paper are pieced together. They have uh, an inherent strength, this paper, and an inherent fragility as constructed pieces that this portrait floats in the centre of. The Forget Me series, of which this is a part, portrays the presidents from the military regime period in Brazil from 1964 to 1985. As he notes, the under the president Artur de Costa de e Silva, the regime enacted a decree which institutionalised practices of torture, repression and censorship, signalling what no, became known as the years of lead. His expression of looking sideways of being caught and captured in a moment. He becomes um, a floating image, something that's captured and caught in a moment in time. This drawing by Andrea Cryer is called Searching and it's a drawing made in thread on a felt, um, so on a fabric. It's drawn with thread on a, a repurposed vintage wall blanket and it's a sketch, a moment when searching for a lost memory. So again, a portrait that situates a memory. And it's from a set of drawings and photographs of her elderly mother, who she was shielding during the COVID-19 pandemic. It has incredible light uh, drawn in thread uh, that runs through this drawing. So again, it's a drawing to experience in the real. These drawings by Craig Fisher, uh, they're pages, it's called Pages from My Sketchbook 2021, and they're made with hand and machine embroidery on linen. So each page is 60 by 80 centimetres, and then it makes a composite uh, of a group of pages. They're an ongoing series of drawings that employ labour-intensive textile techniques of embroidery to represent and replicate the quick notes, sketches and drawings made in notebooks. So they take inspiration from Craig's every day, from the artists and art that he's looking at, and they visualise ideas, thinking and research. The remaking of the original sketches by stitching them offers a different perspective on their value. And Craig has a consistent and persistent interest in the ideas of translation through the process of making, as well as exploring pictorial and sculptural boundaries of drawing. This exquisite drawing by Claire Anscombe is really quite extraordinary. It's hand-drawn, uh, it's graphite on paper, and it's called When Two Become One 2020. And it, it's a reflection, a meditation on immersive image technology. And it refers to Antoine Claudet's 1855 stereoscopic photograph, Francis Georges Claudet as a model. It comes with a set of stereoscopic glasses so that you can actually see it explores the difference between the lenses of looking and the, the bringing together of these drawings to make something that appears stereoscopic, three-dimensional as an illusion. This drawing by Joe Dumpleton is made in graphite on Bristol boards, so on quite a, a heavy structure uh, as a surface to work on. It's called Sorority Sisters 2. 1908 and it's a drawing made in 2020. It's a drawing that plays with composition which crops and zooms into various old group photos and focuses on sections that may ordinarily be overlooked and of course the sense of the overlooked is redolent within the drawing as it talks to these women, uh, female students as part of a society in a university of college in the 1908 in the just after the start of the 20th century. This story by Natalia Stoyanova is incredibly poignant. It's called Best Friend 2021, and it's a drawing produced in response to the struggle of her five-year-old son during the pandemic outbreak and the lack of social contacts that led to him developing imaginary friends to play and communicate with him. So you have this fantastic image of a child facing a wall, but actually embracing uh, the shadow of an imaginary friend. So it's quite a striking uh, drawing with a great deal of pathos and yet 
tenderness um, that very much relates to the experience and reflects on the experience of a small child during lockdown and the isolation that that brought. This drawing by Iva Troge, which is called Leave That War With Me Too, is made in 2021. It's an extraordinarily um, complex drawing. It's made with pencil, graphite, graphite dust on paper. And it's 62 by 147 centimetres. It's a large format drawing which Iva describes as being a series dedicated to exploring the myths surrounding the concept of womanhood from the ambiguity of girlhood to underlying discourses related to faith and religion. This particular drawing has two separate motifs hand-drawn on top of each other to create the illusion of double exposure. And so they're very, very complex. They're incredible um, surfaces and depictions. They have very complex, grand, historic sense of imagery that's overlaid, that relates or feels as though it relates to filmic, um, popular imagery, and yet it has this kind of grandeur, this resonance, and this central figure um, who is the centrifugal force, I would say, within this horizontal drawing. These two drawings by Robert Davis um, are both called The Offing, The Offing 1 and 2, and together they create a related diptych. Um, they're very large, so 150 by 190 centimetres for each piece. The first offing, offing number one, describes a storm, and the second a dead bumblebee lying on its side. The focus of the work is to reflect on the ongoing effects of man-made climate change. The first drawing of a storm is inspired by the opening of Conrad's Heart of Darkness, where the cruising yawl, the Nelly, swings to anchor as a dark sky gathers over Gravesend. In the offing, the sea and sky are welded together with an imminent storm. And really, he's positing the question as to, is this where we are? It's a fantastically extraordinary tone or graphite drawing. So the, the cloud, the storm is hewn out of the graphite on the surface of the paper. And the second drawing is an enormous expanse of paper with this very detailed B drawn um, with a huge amount of um, pathos. The artist suggests it could be considered a folly, uh, but it's a drawing which really looks in detail in a very focused way at an impact. So the dead bumblebee symbolises um, a sense of uncertainty and loss of life um, and the sense of nihilism of our uh, particular challenges in terms of the climate and where we are as a society in relationship to that. This drawing by Paul Fenner is called The Yard 2020. It's made towards the beginning of the very first lockdown and it's made outside on the small terrace of the flat where he lives. The drawing process is awkward. Uh, it's dealing with multiple sheets of paper which are being shuffled on the floor, taken inside and outside in order to draw, to document, to record what's going on outside in the yard. There are some imagined elements in there, so it's a drawing which really talks to that sense of confinement and the busyness of that, the kind of sense of the spaces that people are occupying as they shuffle themselves between inside and outside. And this drawing by Francis Aviva Blaine is called Portrait 2021. It's made in acrylic charcoal on Fabriano paper. It's a portrait of Frances's friend, author, therapist and political activist Susie Orbach, and it was made from observation during the COVID pandemic of 2020. Katie Shepherd's animation is being presented in the exhibition on a small screen, so the size of an iPad uh, as a screen. It's a hand-drawn animation which lasts for 1 minute 16 seconds, and it's called Imaginary Daughter. The animation was made in response to an idea that Katie has been harbouring for a while, which came into fruition while she was isolated during lockdown. And she tried to visualise what it would be like to share her space with the daughter she might have had in another life. So sitting at the kitchen table trying to paint in the way that she did with her mother on the rainy days of her childhood, she's recreating that imagined experience so it has a resonance to the other drawing 
um, of the child and his imaginary friend, but it really talks to the sense of how in isolation people have needed to use their imagination, to use their memory, to draw on those connections and to create the sense of relationships, relationships that they desire or imagine or remember. This composite drawing by Ewan Gray is made of 14 component parts. It's called 14 Expressions of Pain of Partner with Tethered Spinal Cord Syndrome and it's made with pencil on coloured paper. The work depicts the artist's partner who was diagnosed with the neurological disorder Tethered Spinal Cord Syndrome in 2011 and it's a rare condition with symptoms that include numbness, tremors and chronic pain through the body. This series has been executed, so it's a documentary series, if you like, that's been made over a two-year period as the condition worsened, documenting episodes of extreme pain. So on one level, it highlights immediately and intimately the battle with a long-term condition and the difficulty of coping with its management. But on the other, this is definitely documenting and focusing on the helplessness of watching someone you're close to suffer. So it has a huge degree of intimacy and the blue and the pink adds a resonance. So the blue provides our clear core documentation and the pink are these moments um, of depicted intense pain. Incredibly moving piece. And these two pieces by Denise Hickey. One is a drawing which is emulsion and pencil on paper and the other is made with domestic fabric. So it's got a three-dimensional relationship and floats free uh, as an object or a form. So one is called Drawing from Conversation, Drawing Object Object uh, and the Object 2 from Conversation, Drawing Object Object. So they're based on a series of conversations and collaborations with Denise's six-year-old daughter about lockdown, about connections and about physical interaction. And clearly there's a relationship between the drawing and the object. Um, And it's really rather wonderful to see these two together as the ideation of the drawing becomes shaped through a further ideation into this soft sculptural two-dimensional. It's a wall-hung piece, but it's a three-dimensions expression of that so it has everything about a sense of touch about fingers or it seems to allude to something fingerish um, and the way that it, it touches and presses into these softer more composite forms and the materiality of this drawing by Jules Bishop it's called slow copper and it's slow ink and copper ink on shoji paper and it's made as an ice process drawing which is created using ink made from slows from her local area in Wallington in Oxfordshire, and ink made from copper pipe and coins, which have both been frozen and left to melt on the shoji rice paper with a sheet of Fabriano paper underneath, which had residues of hawthorn, rosehip, alder buckthorn and bracken inks made from local hedgerows. Um, Jules is a volunteer with a local climate action group, And part of this is about raising awareness of climate change and a hedgerow project. The drawing, as she says, doesn't have a purpose embodied within it, but actually what it does is leave a residue of these natural dyes, natural substances, natural resources that we have. So the fruits um, that the ink has been made from, as well as things that relate to, to other materials. This drawing by Laura Elkins, who's an artist who lives and works in Washington, D.C., is called Coping with Covid, Self-Portrait with Hands Tied. It's a very fast, fluid drawing, which Laura has decided to explore what it feels like uh, as an equivalent, a performative equivalent, to living with all the barriers that living with Covid has presented. So it is literally drawn on found newsprint. All of the art stores were closed, so there wasn't... uh, the possibility to gather particular drawing paper. So it's not precious, it's drawn on newsprint, it's drawn very fluidly. She sets herself up as the subject uh, and she's drawing herself literally with her hands tied. So it's very much about this sense of incapacity, this sense of imposition uh, that something which has arisen has presented for all of us. Philippa Clark's drawing, Quotidian, The Key for Vaccinations, 
is one of a series of 150 charcoal drawings that Philippa made during lockdown while she was unable to access the studio to make paintings. During lockdown, she began drawing to help to feel in control while everything was dramatically out of control and very unknown. So the act of drawing provided a way of slowing down, taking notice and recording the everyday. This particular drawing documents the queue, the queue for vaccinations with its social distancing and feels very dark, it's shadowy, the shadowy presence of people waiting in this urban environment in a very sparse, dark, gloomy environment for their vaccinations. And this drawing stands as a testament to this very extremely difficult period of time. This drawing called Bankside by Simon Nicholas is a very large drawing made with charcoal on paper. So it's made of pieces of paper that form the whole rather extraordinary illusionistic image. His recent work has been based on urban landscapes and he describes that as dealing with the borders between reality, fiction and photographic representation. And using formal elements such as underlying grids, repetition and pattern, and so actually the structure of the paper provides some of that, they oscillate between figuration and abstraction. And he's interested in making these pictures that offer ambiguous readings that transform the reality of the world they appear to represent into a sophisticated and endless fiction which distances from the spaces we think we know. So it's called Bankside, it has an identifiable location and yet we're examining it in a way that we maybe haven't really looked at the place itself um, and we're experiencing it through the act of drawing and the bringing together of this composite drawing. This drawing by Jaquetta Cook is called Draw Me Like One of Your McQueen Boys. It's made in graphite pencil with ink and gouache on paper and it's very simple in the way that it's presented. She sees this as a self-isolation, self-portrait, wearing Alexander McQueen's black thistle print from the Autumn Winter 20 menswear collection. And it reflects on the idea that during the 2020 period of lockdown, everyone was asked to give up their freedom and self-isolate, and advised, if you like, that if we can't look outside, we should look inside. So as a reflective and creative time, Jaquetta spent this time drawing herself thinking about that positioning. So it provided an opportunity of time, a window within an otherwise busy career um, to explore her identity and reimagine herself using creativity as the ultimate form of escapism in the confines of a restricted existence. The story Devi Diva David, in, made in 2020, is oil pastel on acrylic prime paper and it's made by David Gardner. David makes intricate masks and wears them as he draws, and this, for him, turns the act of looking and drawing into a personal queer ritual. So the mask itself acts as a second layer of skin in which to look out of, and that creates a space, a body within a body, a new identity, and through that it provides an opportunity to connect with an internal energy, an internal identity, and expose that relationship between presentation and the self. Freya Thompson's drawing, Hidden Behind a Mask, is a drawing which provides a testament to the time that we've been in. It's made in graphite on paper and it reflects on the sense of the current issue. So it is illustrating the physical and mental strain and alluding to that through this portrait of someone wearing a mask who's obviously in quite close quarters but the malaise and the sense of despair um, maybe the kind of sense of reflection of the, the subject of the portrait is really critical so it reflects a psychological sense of what it's been like for a young man to be hidden behind a mask and to spend time and hours in lockdown. This modest little drawing called Volpina by Ariana Tanula Malesi is made in pencil. And again, it's a drawing that looks back in terms of memory. So Volpina is the name of her transitional object when she was a kid. That's how Ariana describes it. 
a stuffed animal, a little fox that she used to make to speak to adults to say what she couldn't as a child. So through the pandemic, again, reflecting on some parts of memories of the past that became more vivid uh, than the present. So again, a drawing that situates critical memories and the fragmentation of the drawing with lots of episodic detail and connections. This very small drawing by Hannah Kokoschka is called Miltry Gelato. It's a, a lovely drawing. It's got real vivacity and verve. It's made freehand um, as a pen drawing. Um, so there's no pre-drawing for it. So there's a kind of real commitment about making this drawing. So it has a real uh, quality to it of purposefulness uh, and dynamism. Uh, it depicts what she describes as an abundant supply of ice cream vans during lockdown when the weather was warm. It's a drawing of a van that was parked on the South Bank by the Thames. So it's a drawing that has vivacity. It reflects for her vitality, fun and the sense of holiday. So a kind of also a sense of longing. So this modest drawing by Georgia Buckler is made with ink and tipex on paper. It's called Banger Icon 2020. And it's a reworked exhibition pamphlet that uses a mechanical drawing process that follows a predetermined sense of rules. And out of that comes this fabulous sense of order and shape and formal pattern that has been derived from uh, an exhibition pamphlet. This rather meticulous pen and ink drawing of Mermaid Street in Rye in East Sussex is quite extraordinary. Um, it's incredibly detailed. It has this a phenomenal sense of perspective uh, and documentation from a very particular viewpoint in the street. Elwina Robinson um, says as an artist that she's inspired by the world around her and the places that she goes to and the people that she meets. And she delved into the history surrounding Mermaid Street and discovered the stories that related to it and gained and wanted to suggest a sense of how the past has shaped the present in order to capture the spirit of the place. So while it's often referred to as one of the prettiest streets in England, it also has a long and turbulent history laced with stories of smugglers, sieges, ghosts and secret passageways. And there is something about this sense of very slight foreboding, uh, something slightly ominous about the sense of the drawing, this kind of very detailed pen and ink drawing of Mermaid Street. This is the third drawing by Susie Hamilton in the exhibition. It's called Loris and it's acrylic and charcoal and cardboard, so made with very provisional materials, very freely uh, in terms of its mark making and very dramatically in terms of its sense of contrast. It's a drawing from a series of endangered creatures, so which include lorises and lemurs, that are all drawn on recycled cardboard. So they relate to the solitary figures that Susie draws. You've already seen the one of the Doctor uh, in the exhibition. It relates to the sense of a solitary, cautious nature of the animal emerging from the darkness of a forest, which of course gives it a sense of vulnerability, but it also gives it a sense of charming purpose. This drawing by Rebecca Westfield is called Monologue, and it's made in pencil and charcoal on paper. The monologue refers to the idea of Rebecca's own internal monologue and the idea of a sense of swirling thoughts competing for her attention while seemingly invisible to the outside world. So you have that sense of the swirling hair and the sense of the swirling line that moves through the drawing and relates to that sense of looking out uh, that the image in profile, the figure in profile gives us. So she's used drafting lines to show the journey of the piece and how the mark tells the story. It makes you travel across the surface. But Rebecca also uses both her dominant and non-dominant hands to draw and swaps them when the marks need to change or to become either freer um, and more descriptive of the swirling nature of things or when she needs more control. It's quite a compelling portrait. This drawing by Jill Eastland is called Wandering in the Head. It's a pencil drawing on paper and it also includes a pencil that is being made um, or alludes to the idea of the pencil that's made the drawing. It's quite an obsessive drawing. It's a drawing of a whole map collection which are all piled up and stacked on top of each other. And it's a drawing uh, about her father Stuart's map collection um, and within the drawings of the maps, which are incredibly beautifully made and rendered 
um, through this description of light on this stack of collected maps. There are just a few words, and within those words, there's a sense of the origins and journeys of Jill's parents and her mixed heritage and identity. Catherine O'Donnell is an artist who lives and works in Sydney, and this drawing called Yesterday's Dreams sits as a scroll of paper on the wall. And all of her drawings, or this recent series of drawings, are focused on depicting the suburbs and depicting an urban aesthetic that shapes and informs everyday lives. She looks closely at suburbia, and this drawing is very typical, focuses on an ordinary window, cropped to the point where only the window dressings are on view. And through this, there's this sense of humanity that emanates from these lived-in spaces, the details that you feel give you an insight to what's happening behind those curtains or how the blinds or the curtains have been used or drawn. So they accentuate the attributes of life and longevity and this drawn curtain signifies the sense of an opening between reality and illusion and provides a space for the imagination with an invitation to view the mundane with fresh eyes. Gavin Bowyer's drawing, Moment of Inertia, made in 2021, is a pencil drawing that captures yet another locked-in, lockdown day of his life and his wife's life. And so it's a portrait of his wife, Jane. The drawing captures a moment where Gavin finds her sharing a moment with her daughter in her bedroom. And Jane is in repose. She's invited to witness her daughter's endeavours to master and control an animated PS4 Assassin Creed character. From her cozy, cozy state that you can see this reflected holding herself and lying down, she is observed during the transition from consciousness and sleep. So this is very much about the moment of drifting to sleep and the moment of an eye flickering into focus at being called by someone else. So it's a kind of protective repose. This drawing by Patrick O'Rourke is called Asphalt and Apathy. It's made in 2021 and it's made with charcoal and pastels on plasterboard. So it's a drawing that's 120 centimetres high by 72 centimetres and that provides the ground on which to talk about the possible failure of post-war public housing on the high-rise tower block. So it's a drawing that um, reflects something of its making. It talks to the materiality of home construction, of found plasterboard as a ubiquitous building material, common in, in the construction of tower blocks, and yet it purposes and repurposes it in order to have this representation of a slightly tilted and slightly unstable um, sense of this tower block that he's depicting. And this drawing by Justin Harris is a drawing inspired from childhood photographs. That's its title. Um, and it's made with pencil and ink on paper. And it depicts, again, a memory, I would say. Um, so it's based on photographs taken from when he was 12 um, from the rooftop of the Hong Kong Hilton. Uh, and it reflects on living in that kind of very congested city context where he lived in Hong Kong for seven years. Uh, with his family in various hotels. So it talks to a compression, the height of those towers and being able to look down and observe that space below and the life going on within it. This drawing by Harriet Mina Hill uh, is one of two drawings that she has in the show. It's called Before the Beginning and After the End, The Ellsbury Fragments. There are a series of drawings that she's been making that document the demolition of Chilton, which was a block of flats on the Aylesbury estate. So it documents the history of this piece of concrete. It documents its sense of once having a purpose as a place of living, a place of domesticity, a place within the Aylesbury estate. So it sits as a fragment with this beautiful graphite drawing of its decaying building on its surface. And this drawing is called Demolition Phil Chilton Aylesbury Estate 2020. It's made with silver point and graphite on tissue paper. So it's made with very fine, precious materials on a very delicate and quite complex to draw on substrate. 
It's a drawing of a large block of flats called Chilton that were on the Ellsbury estate. And the drawing is made as those flats were being stripped out in preparation for demolition. Harriet's been working with some of the residents in order to understand their attachment um, and the detachment through the destruction of this home uh, and familiar space for them. So in this drawing it becomes a ghost, it becomes almost ghost-like as a ghost building that reflects actually the, the loss of this utopian aspiration that inspired the building of the Aylesbury estate. This drawing by Sue Bonfanti called Windowscape Keswick 01 is made in 2020. It's graphite on paper and it comes from a series of drawings of windows that explore a technique that she derived from etching and Sue had that question about what it would be like in order to draw just the window pane without any of the surrounding structure. So the outcome of that is this depiction of dirty streaked windows with the dim outline of things in long abandoned buildings as reflections and blinds hanging down, half hanging off. There are trees reflected, obscure highlights and reflected structures that come in and out of focus and provide an ambiguous world of heart glimpsed things. This drawing by Sam Van Strien is called Modeler's Prototype. It's a laser cut engraving on paper and Sam is driven by the question of how and where we experience architecture and how we employ two-dimensional mediums to examine the role of three-dimensional spaces in our lives. Modeler's Prototype is part of a series of laser cut engravings made in response to the modernist architecture of corporate America and it reconsiders and considers the tensions between the highly visible buildings that form the downtown skyline and their intensely private interiors. So you have this extraordinary fading of um, space around uh, the tower block and a sense of its impenetrable exterior. This rather wonderful artist book is by Sandy Horsley it's called Libraries in a Year Before and During COVID-19. It's a unique concertina book. There's only one of them. Uh, and it's made of block prints on paper and book cloth. It's the product of a year-long drawing residency for Suffolk Libraries, where Sandy created over 200 observational drawings on location in 13 libraries. And they're of library users and staff. However, halfway through the residency, the coronavirus arrived. And she saw firsthand how the library staff stepped up to the challenge. They offered wide ranging support to local communities, ensured access to free books continued, and they became, in her view, a fourth emergency service. After a year, she changed the drawing tool to a carving gouge and created over 80 block print drawings in this hand printed book that provides a record of incredible people during ordinary and extraordinary times. It's a really complex book and it's a really beautiful object um, and it provides a unique document of an extraordinary time. This drawing by Elizabeth Nast is called The Vanishing. It's made in carbon pencil on Bristol paper. And it's a drawing of a photograph. It's a drawing of a faded photograph and a drawing of a moment in time from the photograph where members of her extended family whose identity is also faded from memory, is lost. So it's a drawing that really talks to the signifier of connection, the signifier of the connection to a moment in time, to an extended family, to a heritage and a narrative. And it's also a drawing that creates this amazing memorial to the idea of an eventual disappearing along with the photograph taken. This drawing by Xavier Robla de Medina has a very long title. It's called The Removal of the Statue of Queen Wilhelmina Gerard van Nam from Independence Square in Paramibo, Suriname in 1975. Right, visual artist Stuart Robla de Medina, source Stitchkin du Suriname Museum Archive 2162. It's a drawing, a really exquisite drawing made with graphite on paper and it depicts a statue of Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands standing in front of Fort Zeelandia. In 1974, this was moved away from where she used to be positioned 
and was replaced with a sculpture of Yopi Pengal by Stuart Robler de Medina. In the archive of the Suriname Museum exists a photograph of Stuart and a colleague guiding the rope-bound sculpture of Queen Wilhelmina down into her present resting place. Xavier depicts this and sees this as the Queen and Fort Zealandia marking the land and the brutal failure of empire. Violent structures are deemed to be permanent and are often rotting and fragile. They can easily be torn down. Xavier lives and works in Berlin, in Germany, and was born in Paramaribo and Suriname. So this is a drawing which has an autobiographical element and it has also a very analytical element in terms of the way that it depicts a photograph from an archive that memorialises an extraordinary moment in history. This drawing by Karen Conway uh, is called Exquisite Corpse Chicago uh, and it's drawn from memory. So I think the period is 1971 to 84, but it's a drawing made in January 2021 and it's made at the kitchen table and it's made by folding. So Exquisite Corpse is a really good clue uh, to the way that this is made. So it talks to the need to draw, the need to make, the need to think about and visualise memory uh, in a period of lockdown where there's no access to other ways of making other than at the kitchen table. Um, so it has these fantastic composite images which are drawn on the folded paper uh, and which is then refolded so that there's a small area to draw on. The drawing reveals itself once it's unfolded, once it's unwrapped and then it folds back again. So it's a little bit like a tablecloth uh, in the way that it opens out and reveals the images, it reveals the memories uh, that Karen had as a child of living in Chicago. This very small, really detailed drawing by Federica Beretta is called Japanese Storefront and it's made with pen on paper. It's 21 by 15 centimetres and it investigates the geometry of architecture. It plays with lights and shadows, with emptiness and fullness, both pictorially and in terms of the subject. So it actively uses the negative space and focuses on the main elements that define the subject and its identity. This drawing by Amy Dury has these fantastic double figures, a duet of figures. It's called Self-Defence and it's made with charcoal and acrylic paint on paper. It's an image that she's been inspired, it's been gleaned from a vintage instructional video on self-defence and she's chosen these images because of their double meanings and thought-provoking gestures. So that whole idea of self-defence has a real resonance, but there's a wonderful connectivity and question about touch and purpose within this drawing. Thea's Fine Art is the artist's working name, and this drawing is called Sizing Up. It's made with pencil on card, and it's a really exquisitely wrought drawing of two figures in space, and that sense of them sizing each other up. The work that she makes is used to represent an often overlooked perspective of women and children, and uses her own body as an expressive medium, fascinated by subtle clues within the human form that suggest experience relationships. And her drawings aim to capture these fleeting moments within the drawings and the objects that she creates. So Sizing Up examines the importance to young males of outgrowing their mothers. It's a terrific drawing. Nell Brookfield has this pair of drawings in the show. One is called Touch Self-Portrait and the other is called Touching Someone Else's Face. They're really poignant drawings because she set out to make drawings that depict the sense of a portrait or a self-portrait by drawing touch. So they're drawn in response to touch rather than sight, although they have referential elements within their depiction. The Touch Self-Portrait was drawn in response to the lockdown. So she started this whole project two days before the government advised everyone to stop touching our faces. And she had set herself a goal to touch hers daily. Um, and so having started this whole project, she was unable to work on anything other than the things that she could feel under her fingertips within her own environment. So she spent eight months drawing self-portraits from touch and then when the easing of restrictions began last summer, began drawing other people's faces from touch, which felt, as you can imagine, quite rebellious and risky 
because touch is one of the things that we all feel slightly uncomfortable about, having become a little taboo since the beginning of the pandemic. So there's an intimacy and a curiosity and actually a curious realisation of a visual equivalent to that experience in these two drawings. They're very moving. This drawing by Jenny Laskowski is called Connection Issues 2021 and it's a really informal drawing. It's made with paper, pen, post-it notes and it has a fragility. It's not framed. The post-it notes could be peeled off or fall off as we all know they do when the glue becomes more brittle. The drawing is about the new job that she started as a young person's social prescriber in the pandemic. And she began drawing with clients on post-it notes after their video calls as a way to process the intimate and heavy conversations and to reflect on how and what she could do to support them. These drawings reflect on the notes that she takes uh, as a professional and they're drawings that reflect on how difficult it's been for young people. This self-portrait by Emily Ball is simply called a self-portrait as a confident woman. It's drawn in 2021 and it's made with charcoal on paper. Within Emily's practice, she often makes self-portraits which act to mark the passing of time. And they also act as a tool of reflection and a boost to confidence to give herself courage. And so this sense of a confident woman staring back from the drawing is something that she sees as a positive. It's an image that gives her confidence but also intends to give her daughter confidence as she supports her through difficult times. This rather beautiful drawing by Yvonne Kay is called Lights 2020. It's made with pencil on paper and it's a monochrome pencil drawing of the coloured lights from a Christmas tree with the tangle of the lights reflecting, I guess, the anticlimax of the post-Christmas period and that sense of it all being in black and white and fading through the light with this sense of erasure um, where the light glows, um, reflecting a kind of sense of switching off, a sense of diminishing um, the excitement from the festivities as they're put back into the box or gathered on a floor. So it has a wonderful sense of light and disappearing. This drawing by B. Haynes is called Wave. It's a really poignant, small drawing. Um, and the drawing reflects on B's experience. Her grandfather was taken into a care home at the height of the pandemic. And when she first went to visit him, she could only wave to him on the third floor. So the wonderful device, perspectival device, and the way that this is mounted and framed also adds to the drawing, the sense of looking up and the sense of distance and connection through glass as a wave. This drawing by Chris Bruce is called Bubble and it's made with graphite on cartridge paper. And it's a drawing that's hewn from the mark making. So a sense of making a ground with graphite out of which images are teased and formed. And it becomes something where it's almost like finding an image, reading tea leaves, um, and there's never a kind of fixed plan about what the depiction is going to be. But there's something rather beautiful about the idea of this reverie resulting in something which creates a bubble. It creates a self-contained experience of the imagination. This really dynamic drawing by Ben Hancock's is called Two Elements of Chaos, and it's made with pencil on paper. It's one of a series of works which were made after looking at the demon drawings of the 15th century Transoxonian artist Mehmed Sia Kalem and the apocalypse engravings of France's first engraver Jean Duvet. You can see that they have a sense of a spurt of energy, a dynamic mark and a sense of something demonic, something apocalyptic in their making and their rendering as they flash into life, leaving the resonance of the pre-marks behind. This very charming hand-drawn animation uh, called El Duende by Ab Gabriela Adach is three minutes and ten seconds in length. So it's a short, dynamic, energetic um, animation. And it's a visual response to her experiences of working and training as an art psychotherapist during the pandemic. It has a real energy, a sense of the dance, a sense of the wind, a sense of 
energy and movement and short, sharp, disconnected but connected experiences. This very quiet drawing by Hannah Davis is called Little Light Patch and although it's made on canvas or linen, it's made with coloured pencil so it quite purposefully sits within the territory of drawing although it alludes to the relationship of painting. Little Light Patch is a quiet study of reflected light onto a crumbling urban wall and it captures the moment of that glowing light and a patch of natural beauty to be found anywhere. So it's a wonderfully optimistic drawing. Caroline Blythe's drawing, Who Lives, Who Dies, Who Tells Your Story, is made with graphite on paper, and it uses locations that are taken from screenshots from Google Maps Street View, and they're selected using an algorithm that works with personal data from retail receipts of her lived actual experiences in London from 2005 to 2010. So it brings together a composite rendering, a realisation of actual experiences. They're brought together uh, as a kind of visual archaeology through searching of current depictions through the tool um, available to us all through Google Maps. Leah Anna Hennig's drawing Dog Walking 2021 is something that depicts a moment in time where it seemed that everybody or even more people got themselves a so-called four-legged friend, a dog. Leah spent her time drawing in London's woods and parks and observing the sense of this new trend. It has a sense of humour and it has a sense of anxiety and it has a sense of connectivity and it really does reflect on a moment in time through this illustrative generous mode of drawing with this colour, it's made in ink on paper, uh, and a very obsessive sense of line and mark. This very simple drawing by Mark Boylan is called Summer Self-Reflection. It's really modest drawing, it's made in marker pen and pencil on paper, and it was created during the first lockdown period, intended to capture a brightening mood of a yet unclear future in time. And it's created with a mixture of pencil and marker pen, which is used as it illustrates a sharp afternoon sun and shadow. So it feels in this wonderful narrow aperture, it's a bit like a bookmark in time, and it creates within this narrow aperture a reflection of sitting, drawing in the sunshine in a domestic garden. This drawing by Freya Pocklington is called Sculptures in the Living Room. It's a really large drawing made in ink, charcoal and pastel. It's 195 by 140 centimetres. Freya's undertaking an MPhil, and that MPhil is a research degree which examines the role of fine art portraiture within narrative medicine. And it has an element of um, autobiography, and it reflects on the challenges faced by being a new mother while experiencing a limiting long-term disability. So the drawing focuses on the physical and mental effects of invasive medical procedures during both pregnancy and the recovery period after childbirth. And you can see this fantastic domestic environment and there are such wonderful elements within it of the dog, the cat, the kind of chaos surrounding the central figure and a sense of the connectivity to all of these procedures and apparatus associated to it. Valerie Abadi's drawing Loin de Chez Soi is made with pigment ink pen on paper. It's a drawing made from memory and it's made from a scene observed in the Paris metro a few months earlier. It illustrates the cultural disparities in society and a delicate cohabitation of those differences. So she's a self-taught artist who's drawing to document the experiences of being in the world and focusing on the nature of how people exist together uh, within society. Zoe Gibson's ink drawing on paper is a really touching drawing. It's called Sainsbury's 2021. It's a drawing that she's made uh, to illustrate a memory from childhood. And as many drawings in the show do, it looks back to memories um, of 
moments that are really critical and the sense of a big feeling life event that's been shoehorned into the mundane. So he was raised by a single dad and that sometimes meant trying to navigate moments of growing up as a girl without much guidance and this aims to capture elements of this. So it's very much a fantastically touching drawing of shopping with the widowed father who's buying his daughter her first bra in the evening on a school night during the regular food shop. James Gregory's drawing Three Bin Bags was made in 2021 and it's made with marker pen on paper and they're really simple iconic forms and they're images that are taken from a large range of quick drawings which he often makes while watching TV with his mind in neutral and they have value as a form of therapy to counter periods of depression so they're drawings which are about affirming a presence affirming a thought and affirming a creative process in the everyday. This drawing by Steve Payne is called Ruskin in the Country. It's made with ink on paper and you can see that these marks depict areas or surfaces and, and provide an equivalent to cross you over the terrain of the farmland and open country near to his home in Kenilworth. It's drawn on paper salvaged from a scrap pile of discarded prints at the art school where he'd been working. On those discarded prints were experimental images taken from a bronze bust of John Ruskin. You can see part of one of those images clinging to the right-hand edge of the drawing, and so it forms a subtle intrusion of the ghost of Ruskin into the Warwickshire countryside. This astonishing pastel drawing by Mark Seeley is called 16mm. It was made in 2020. Mark says that he's drawn to the play of light on the forms and the subdued colours and the way that you can see the mechanical workings like bones within this vintage film projector that he owns. He makes quite stark portrayals of objects so they have this kind of ghost-like, phantom-like quality. The sense of surrealness, they feel a little bit disembodied um, and for him that's a sense of a ghost-likeness of a vintage thing floating against darkness which leaves a comforted feeling of something inanimate being given a second chance of life. These two drawings by Anne Bridges talk about shopping in a pandemic. So one's called Black Pants in a Pandemic 2020 and the other Underpants in a Pandemic. And they're really about that experience instead of going out to buy things in the real, having to buy things online. So the sense of actually the search and typing in Black Pants which then gives a variety of styles and outlets to draw from. So drawing from the screen for Anne became an absorbing activity while confined to her flat in the winter months of the pandemic. And so, like many others, turning to internet shopping for essentials and searching and scrolling, revealing endless opportunities to buy even the most basic of items. So these drawings really are very much focused on online browsing and shopping. This very lovely horizontal panoramic uh, drawing by Gabriella Schutz is made with pro markers on paper and it's called The Scene and the Ephemeral Events that Took Place in Our Living Room 2020. And Gabriella has an interest in depicting her immediate surroundings, a typical family life in the 21st century. And this panoramic work came about because of the reluctance to restrict her gaze and that allowed a narrative to develop in terms of what she was depicting. It's a very large drawing which scans across a, a living room with two young girls in occupancy and then out into the hallway. So it provides a scan from one particular point in space and depicts the natural variations in daylight, Gabriella's daughters and a cat sitting on the sofa while she's drawing. So there are all sorts of things in there that are depicted very lovingly and very purposefully uh, of this static environment that was ever shifting. So it's underscored by an ebb and flow of delivery vans in the background, of things happening, and talks to a kind of sense of malaise and yet a real sense of life through that wonderful colour uh, of being in lockdown and in one space. So it creates a bigger space where the external world and interiority are become celebrated. Alexandra Stepien's drawing called Red Island is made with pastel on canvas. So it's made with drawing materials, although it, it sits on those edges between painting and drawing. 
It focuses on a subject taken from everyday life as a fragment, parts of life that seemingly don't stand out with anything special. So it's very much about the red island of the sofa uh, and this moment of playing with the dog and the kind of sense of melancholy, anxiety, a sense of um, sadness and reflection. So very much about an inner landscape made up of emotions and feelings where time and place play no role. So it's a suspended moment and that sofa is the island of where experience takes place. This drawing by Jackie Berridge is a three-dimensional drawing and it's made of a number of discrete elements that come together to form the whole. It's called Three Tears and it relates to drawings that explore loneliness and aloneness. It relates to lockdown, quarantine, isolation and everything within here, all the characters that occupy different spaces in a domestic environment are all jostled together. So it's the space, a house of imagination uh, and a house of imagination that provides company during this solitary period. So it's a really poignant drawing full of complex connections, tiers of relationships and it really sits as a very wonderful exploratory drawing that relates to things like stage design, set design, illustration and other aspects but it's full of really joyous moments of making different kinds of materials, different kinds of drawing as it reflects on creating a space that, that brings everything together, everything jostles together and yet they're not real relationships. This very systematic drawing by Caroline Poole is called Party of Six. It's a party of six chairs. And it's a rather wonderful drawing where she started to look at objects in her house to draw and paint from because she had less access to people. So while they staged scenes, she started to anthropomorphise things from antique chairs and plants to skulls and bottles. And Party of Six represents the Covid rule of six and the subsequent toing and froing of making plans and cancelling them. For her, the chairs appear to be in a line-up, each one standing in for its missing human. Selina Pope's drawing is of Norman Busigo, and it's a portrait that represents Norman at a defining stage in his life, having received an offer to train as a solicitor. The drawing's made with graphite on paper and it's called Obulomu Bugenda Mu Masao, which means life goes on in Luganda, which is the mother tongue of Norman Busigo. In this moment, it's very much a moment of taking, if you like, a deep breath, a moment of self-containment and reflection before a transitional moment. And this um, is an imaginative drawing. It takes on... Uh, representative images, so the growth of native Ugandan plants represent his heritage and at the same time there's a spider which alludes to being caught in a trap and the idea that this is an unsuspecting moment that one has to look at, at and look forward to into the future. So it's about a definite, defining stage in life, the moment at which Norman was offered the opportunity to train as a solicitor and it encapsulates reflections through these natural forms and images that reflect and relate to those decisions, those possibilities and a concept of growth and development. This drawing by Bob Deacon, four one metre steel straight edges made in 2021 and it's made in pencil and water-based paint on paper. The pencil drawing of the straight edge outlines is made with precision and the 10 millimetre divisions are measured, the individual millimetres are not, the numerals are freehand. So the drawing is planned and predictable up to this point and then colour wash is applied with a two inch brush and that brush stroke lasts as long as the paint load in the brush. The one metre length takes as few strokes as possible and the temptation to blend is resisted. The steeliness is unpredictable and for Bob he likes the inclusion of the well-considered, the happenstance, the accurate, the distorted, the measured and the accidental. This very exquisite graphite pencil drawing by Amy Collins is called Summer Shadow. It's 140 by 130 centimetres 
and it aims to capture the fleeting moments within nature that are a constant and evolving change, but frequently dismissed in modern life. So it's a life-size drawing that aims to capture shadow, light, reflection, and the stages of life of these natural forms within the area drawn. They're wildflowers found within London, and the drawing has evolved from the first signs of the stages of life to dying flowers, indicating and referencing the time taken within the drawing. The seasons are a universal reminder of the passage of time and life cyclical nature, and this drawing very much documents that sense of that cycle of life to death to transition and again on and on through that cyclical happening. Fiona Michi's drawing, Can You Make My Thoughts Disappear, is made with pen on paper. It's incredibly detailed and quite an extraordinary drawing. The drawing was begun just before the national lockdown in 2020, the first one, and three weeks of isolation allowed Fiona to draw on a daily basis with the aim of covering an area the size of an A4 sheet of paper. Drawing in pen is a permanent gesture. Every mark is permanent, every mistake is revealed, and it exposes every correction. Listening to Radio 4 during lockdown, the drawing grew day by day, and this gave Fiona the mental space for concentration, to provide a distraction to what was happening around her. And the drawing was finally finished on October the 26th. Christina Chan's drawing, Noon's Valley, made in 2020, documents and reflects on her experience of being an artist in residence in the Blue Mountains in Australia in 2019. And it reflects on the sense that everything that she saw during that residency, everything that she experienced has now burned. It's been destroyed through the Australian bushfires. And every step, note, image and place no longer exists as it does in her memories. So this drawing is made on returning to the UK and the following months of lockdown, where these places in the Blue Mountains came to represent the strength, resilience and perseverance that we find that she found in herself. That sense of the amazing Australian natural response to bushfires where things regenerate and revive in an incredibly vibrant and resilient way. It's a rather amazing drawing. It's made in coloured pencil on Japanese paper and it's 90 by 125 centimetres. And it both represents close looking and the sense of renewal and revival. The Working Drawing Award itself really focuses on the role of drawing in terms of ideation. So making ideas real in the world, making them visible and translatable, something that other people can pick up, connect to and transform into a product, a design, a building, a painting, all sorts of different objects and artefacts. I think drawing, especially hand drawing, is actually more than ever a lot more important in terms of design and architecture because actually it's one of the very, very simple ways of actually expressing yourself, finding ideas, uh, communicating ideas. So it's a means of communication which is actually very, very direct and very, very um, accessible to even non-experts. So drawings say a lot about a product and uh, a lot more than mechanical drawings do. Hand drawings actually communicate a lot about products and about, uh, about design. The very first drawing that we're going to talk about is Christopher Green. Christopher Green's drawing is called Blackfriars Bridge Tonal Plan and it's made with pencil. It's a huge drawing. It's 160 by 213 centimetres and made on a single sheet of paper he started to draw a section of the nearest arch girder of Blackfriars Bridge in order to understand how it was made. So it's a drawing about understanding the construction. In order to get its curve right, he needed to draw its full length and that expanded the drawing. And to understand how all the arches worked together, he needed to draw the whole bridge and expanded the drawing still further. So as the work proceeded, on, it was drawn on site over about six weeks, he became more and more interested in using pencil to draw everything together, including the space of the sky in a strong, clear design. So this drawing is very much about understanding through the depiction of light and shade or tone, the structure of Blackfriars Bridge and how it operates and sits in space. 
It's quite an astonishing drawing. Julie Menelauer's drawing, called Figure Spaces, is made with pencil drawing inks on rice paper, and it aims to find a balance and portray a resistance that occurs in a contained space. So these working drawings are serial explorations of inner landscapes that become important to her as they test the process through drawing with ink, making pencil marks, creating unexpected textures and spaces of interest, and responding to the flow and unpredictability of mark making through drawing that creates its own dialogue. These three sketchbook drawings by Joshua Bristow are massing studies, and they're drawings of Lansdowne's National Theatre on the South Bank. They relate to this idea of documenting the city and of architecture as being an integral part of the urban landscape. But they're drawings towards a larger series of work. And they're really exploring their observational drawings, they're made on site, and they're looking at the architecture and the way that light falls across it as he documents, gathers information and records information for future work. It's part of the Working Drawing Award selection so it's very much about drawing as process, drawing as documentation, drawing as record that can then be used and provide the information for something else, for another drawing, another painting, an artefact. Uh, Joshua studied architecture and drawing, um, so this is very much an interest coming together within these works. Zara Akbari Basari's drawings, um, there are two of them in the show, are very much preparatory drawings uh, for her work um, as an artist. She makes paintings which are largely acrylic on canvas and they reflect on her strong cultural tradition as well as a view of the world in which she's living. So these drawings, one is of a, a red-legged partridge and it's made with coloured pencil and mechanical pencil and the other is a drawing of Sara. Sara is her Afghan friend and it has a real resonance um, and as we look at Sarah in her sheer confidence and freedom to be depicted in the way that she is. Sheila Gaffney's drawing is called After the Jugness of the Jug. It's a drawing made in order to make sculpture. Um, and it's a, a plan and elevation with a touch of embodied dreaming thrown in. Uh, it's made as a plan and elevation drawing method. It's made with measurement to explore the relationships between surfaces, gaps and edges. And in that way, she's observing the material world while stripping away the subject matter of the things being looked at. And so the graphic mark on the paper surface is being processed through observation. And that touch of the materials to the paper provides a register of Sheila's thinking. And it's a drawing system that offers an artist both technical and psychological information to be used and developed in other images at another time. Kifu Nguyen is a current uh, Master's Architecture student at Frankfurt University of Applied Sciences. And key drawing is a digital drawing. It's hand-drawn on a PC with 3D modelling software. And it's of the Yerevan Contemporary Art Centre, which was designed to establish a multidisciplinary meeting space centred and strengthened by art. So from the ground level, you can see the many paths and open spaces that connect people from all directions to the upper level and where one would find a big hall of the exhibition to overlook the southern side of the city. So this drawing is intended to not only depict the architectural tectonic principle, but also to depict the liveliness of all that is promised to take place in the planning and developing and envisioning of this design for the Cultural Arts Centre. Ian Chamberlain also has drawings in the main drawing prize. Uh, this drawing by Ian Chamberlain is a working drawing. It's called a mirror study and it's a pencil drawing. It's a study that's based on the acoustic sound mirrors on the South Kent coast and it builds on his long-standing interest in man-made architectural and technological forms and their symbolic representation in the landscape. Drawing them allows him to evolve and work around a subject so he can explore the form, the tone, the composition and surface qualities and through making these exploratory drawings a hierarchy is established which means that they can play with these as he develops them as a basis for future etchings. So Ian is a primarily a printmaker uh, and the drawings are independent, but they inform and become and are translated through the act of printmaking, developing and celebrating their graphic and tonal qualities. 
Alejandro Pascual, uh, his drawing is of a staircase in North London, and he draws things that surround him. Uh, everyday scenes like ordinary objects, things that are in front of him constantly. And so the drawing is very much about finding out how to organise a composition, how to construct the way that colour operates and how to help that convey emotion and generate atmosphere within other works. He's trained as a fine artist and these working drawings contribute as exploratory ideas to those. Georgia Kitty Harris uh, also has two complete drawings, final drawings, drawings as um, final works in the show. Uh, this working drawing by Georgia Kitty Harris is called Facts Communicated by Others. Unlike the other drawings, it's made with pencil on paper. But it's a study of women from London who were photographed when they were admitted to asylums in Epsom at the turn of the centuries. And her process is to go through patient case notes and photographs and archives. And that means that she then draws from those and gathers together a sense of identity of the images of the people that she wants to document over time. They also relate to her own time spent in a psychiatric ward. So they use time and graphite to try and understand these women from over a hundred years ago. And that for her is a kind of self-reflection, but it's also a compositional challenge. It's a working through. On this particular drawing, you can see notes. You can see all sorts of aspects of the thinking behind the final drawings as they come to realisation. Aisha Matal is an architect um, who lives and works in Gujarat in India. And as an architect, she imagines and sees things that don't exist. So drawing is used to ideate, to show, to imagine and present ideas to clients and to others. So it's very much a tool to envision um, ideas and spaces. So this drawing for Ambika River House is a digital illustration uh, for a house by the river in a forest by a city. It's inspired by Claude Lorraine's seaport at sunset and it illustrates her vision for this building and brings out elements in the context that feed into the house design. So this drawing allowed everyone to experience and participate in evolving emotions of the building and to build a dream together. This drawing is by Marc Bruce, who was born in France and lives and works in Belgium. It's called De Landa Carthago 2020. It's made with ink and charcoal and invisible ink, and it's 80 by 100 centimetres. It relates to utopian ideals in the sense that utopia is the most powerful and mysterious lifeblood, as Marc calls it, in history. And the idea that utopia arises from the past to unveil the horizon very much in alignment with the sense of what drawing can do. It's about looking to what we do not see and finding an opportunity to change, to realise, to sense and to touch the world in a peculiar manner. And that being a way of imagining a world that can be as a dreamlike presence, but also an articulated presence, a detailed rendering of a particular imagined and powerful place. And this drawing by Jessica Hayward is called The Nest. It's ink on paper. It's a very modest drawing. It's 29 by 42 centimetres. Jessica works predominantly in drawing and textiles and explores the ideas of abjection, women's work and labour in a domestic context. In her most recent series, The Heartless Hurt Less, which focuses on ab abjection and looks at the boundary between life and death, observing the beauty and fragility of our everyday natural environments, to capture bodies in considered and meticulous detail. So this is a found deceased creature and she provides them with an identity through the act of drawing, a tender, reflective recording of this dead creature that would be otherwise ignored or forgotten. Those trucks were drawn by somebody before they were made. 
So, I guess, over to Anita. I am going to announce the very first prize of the evening, which is the Student Award. And I'm going to announce that Gabriella Adat, and I'm not sure quite how we say your name, is the winner of the Student Prize in the Trinity Boy Wolf Drawing Prize. <laughs> Congratulations. The Working Drawing Award was chosen by Leonie Bell, the director of V&A Dundee, by Charles Oak Job, who is a product designer and architect and academic in Zurich and Bern, and by Paul Finch, the programme director of the World Architecture Festival. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is Sara Akbari Baziri. The eventual winner convinced all of us almost straight away because it's actually an outstanding piece of work. It's, uh, it's very direct, it's um, almost very traditional actually in terms of drawing. Uh, just exquisite drawing talent and I think it's actually quite obvious when you see it why we picked this particular winner uh, as the winner. <laughs> now I'm going to make the announcement of the biennial Evelyn Williams Drawing Award. So I'm going to invite David Alston who is a trustee of the Evelyn Williams Trust to come up on stage to announce the Evelyn Williams Drawing Award. The award goes to Roland Hicks. We are very fortunate to have found a partnership with Drawing Projects UK, with the Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize and with Hastings Contemporary, which works for all the partners. So uh, a submitting artist to this very prestigious drawing show, then gets approached to submit a proposal for an exhibition somewhere down the line, uh, which will take place in Hastings Contemporary. So the award is for £10,000, which is a fairly significant investment in, a, in an artist to develop their work and to have a period where that work develops into a fully-fledged show in in Hastings Contemporary. So it's really difficult because how does one compare such diversity? But in the end what we like to think about is this particular moment in time, how we can seed fund an artist to make a, a really significant body of work that will be pivotal in their development and that always informs the choices. And, and to think about how we might position that in the context of Hastings as well and what that will deliver to our ever-growing audiences. The second prize for Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize 2021 is awarded to David Haynes. It's taken from the, a quote from The Second Coming by Yeats, the, the poem's the most quoted modernist poem, I think in the English language and um, he wrote it after, uh, certainly after the, the flu influenza crisis of 1918 to 20 and, and it was almost, uh, yeah obviously in, in, in light of what we've just been through over the last two years, it seemed to me kind of quite pertinent to re-look um, at those, those words and it, it was a, from a series of, of, uh, of uh, drawings I was making using these, these balloons as these kind of melancholic objects but also in, in a some way offering hope, are they half filled, are they half empty, they're hanging on threads, kind of as, as many artists are kind of locked in your studio especially in the, this recent time and kind of contemplating what it actually means um, and how words and how images can, can form to make some kind of office, hopefully some kind of hope but also acknowledging that there's uh, difficult things happening in the world at the moment. As you know it's a really fabulous show, really difficult to make decisions and the panel made a unanimous decision to award the first prize to Gary Lawrence, which is the fantastic drawing. Congratulations.
Well, I saw an image from something from 1300, a, a kind of, of Jesus, I, I believe, I guess it was Jesus, laying on a table with disciples and people around him. And it looked like an op operating table, an operating theatre. And because I'd recently had an operation myself, I thought I would do something to do with, you know, having an operation. If you can make art about having operations, and I thought of keyhole surgery, and because it's an old image, I thought of ye olde keyhole surgery. Just trying to be witty, so it all kind of came from that. You know, the abstract expressionists use house paint. I've tried the expensive stuff, it doesn't make for better art, and I couldn't afford it anyway. So I had to find a way of doing work. I could do it in pounds, five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. I mean, I can't spend, you know, half a million on an artwork. I don't really want to, it wouldn't seem right anyway. I like kind of doing it on the cheap. They still, you know, it's not about the price of the materials. It, it can't be about that, it has to be about something else. So thank you for being here this evening. Enjoy the exhibition, make the most of it, because you're going to put it into the memory bank until November, and then you're going to really enjoy it again. Congratulations. Thank you. Finally, I'd like to say an enormous and heartfelt thank you to all of our selectors who spent many hours and many days looking at drawings, discussing drawings, thinking about the drawings presented to them and to making a collective decision about what would be included in the exhibition. And then a further collective decision about what would be awarded the main prizes for the Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize 2021. So our major partner Trinity Boy Wharf Trust and Urban Space Management are absolutely intrinsic to being able to provide these opportunities for artists. Our support from Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design and the University of Dundee where I'm also the Dean is also integral to being able to present it. We work with the wonderful Parker Harris as art consultants who support us in generating and, and uh, facilitating the artist's submission and their presentation of their work. And we also have great support from Howdens and Hiscox in terms of exhibitions insurance. They are just some of the people who contribute to the project. An enormous congratulation to everybody with the drawing included in the exhibition and a really fabulously warm and wonderful congratulations to everybody who won an award in the Trinity Boy Wolf Drawing Prize 2021.